Welcome back, fellow shop rats. Today we're back on the 26 Oakland, and Dad will be here in a little while. And we just got a bunch of stuff we're going to do. Before he gets here, I have a huge mess to clean up. I've been working for almost six weeks now on an epic episode on the 67 Plymouth Belvedere that we call the Golden Mullet. So watch for that coming real soon. You're not going to want to miss it. All right, well, I'm going to get cleaned up, and you can watch the show intro, and by the time you're done with that, I should be done with this, and we'll be on the Oakland. I'm Mike. This is My Cars Shop. Told you we'd be right back. So here's my thoughts for today. The camera is flickering in and out, and I talked to Chris about that. Yeah, the backup. Yes, the backup camera. Yeah, okay. um, and talked to Chris about that, and he suggested it might be a ground issue. We did talk about whether or not sharing the ground between the 6 and 12 volt systems could be a problem. He said they do it all the time in their industrial equipment, and it's not a problem. So he suspects it's an issue of ground that it's just not a good ground. However, observation today, when I backed it out of the trailer, started it up, camera wouldn't work at all. Mm -hmm. Never came on once. Got it in here. As soon as I shut the car off, the camera came on. So I started the car, camera went out. I'm wondering if it's the power feed coming off the back of that ammeter, if that ammeter is causing some kind of RF signal on that six volt line and the, and the converter can't interpret that. So I'm wondering if we should run both positive and negative. We can just run some test wires up to that inverter from the battery and cut all the vehicle electrical out of it completely. Okay. Because we're feeding off of the ammeter and we don't know how clean that signal is. That makes sense. Yeah, um, have something to do with the ignition system on these things, with the points and condenser and the, you know, the breaker. Yeah, the condenser should take all that out of it, but you know the generator yeah. is going to make more noise than, than the distributor probably. Because it seems to me that you know I remember back in the early days of our first TV that when Dad would come home from work and drive in the yard, uh, well, the wall, the driveway was right next to the wall where the TV was, right. that it would cause yeah. flickering on the TV till he shut the car off. And it seems like he put something on the car to uh, eliminate that, unless it was on the TV itself. Well, you know, I didn't think about that because this is just solid copper ignition wires. There's not resistor wires and resistor wires are also on the spark side to eliminate radio frequency. Hmm. Um, and this doesn't have that. So that's possible. So we may need to look at putting some kind of power filter on it, but I suspect, I guess the, I don't, I'm trying to think if there's a way we could run the thing without it being powered off of the car and run the car and see if it causes an issue. Maybe there is. A separate six volt supply? Right. Yeah, some kind of separate six volts supply uh, or even a 12 volt supply just, you know, to run the, the video camera circuit itself. Could you run it off a battery charger plugged into the... We tried that and I don't think it worked, remember? Oh. Uh -huh. Oh, no, I was... Well, we've got plenty of batteries, so we could just throw a battery on oh, the floor sure. for 12 volts and run some jump wires. So, so we got some testing to do. Uh, if we get that sorted out, that could take a while. Uh, I want to get these headlight wires rerouted also. And I thought maybe we'd try to stain that last wheel we never got done. So, okay. And if we really are gluttons for punishment, we could start taking the trim off the windshield to just get an idea of what it's going to take to pull the windshield. So yeah. I'm sure that's more than we'll ever get done. <laughs> <laughs> we decided to go ahead and just hook this camera system up to a battery and completely eliminate the entire electrical system of the car to determine whether it's noise on the electrical system of the car, or if it's RF coming from something. We think we know what's going on, but let me show you what's going on here first. Yeah. RF is? Radio frequency interference. Oh, okay. RF, RFI, radio frequency interference. Okay, so our camera's on right now. And let's see what happens here. Start it up. Get a liar out of me. See all that noise in it? When we started this a minute ago to test all of this, that camera immediately went out. 
one of the thoughts that we have is you got to loosen some wires up the coil is literally less than two feet away and we're wondering if that coil is generating enough frequency interference that it's causing all of these issues there it goes you can see it went out but when literally oh, it's out of gas <laughs> Um, I shut the gas off. So. Oh, okay. So when we were running before, I mean, it wouldn't even come on. It, it, I did this, the camera was on, I started it and it went out and it wouldn't come back on until I shut the car off. And as soon as I shut the ignition off. So we know it's picking up noise is my point. It's just because the camera's on now, it's going to make a liar out of me. <laughs> <laughs> so I think what I want to do is let's loosen the wires up and let's take this thing back as far as we can with the leash that we have. Okay. Away from the, the coil and let's see if that signal cleans up. Yeah. <clears throat> Put some distance between the two mm -hmm. devices. Yep. You know, maybe just simple as putting a resistor wire on the coil might take care of this. But I want to I want to see if we get some distance what happens. Sure. All of this. But we took this uh, unit off of the dash, and Dad moved it out the door and then it cleared up. Um, we should plug it back into the six volt source and make sure it does the same thing. But oh, sure. We moved it up in the car and it got better. We moved it back in the car and it got better. I think it's coming from the coil. I got a feeling, and I'm wondering if we throw a resistor wire just on the coil, if that will take care of the problem. But let's um, do the same test again. We'll run it up to six volt from the car and see what happens. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's possible it could be feeding in over the the wires. Is what you're, right. It's yeah. possible. Oh, well, you know, that's the other thing is we maybe just shield these wires, and that would take care of it. Mm -hmm. I didn't think of that, but I got a feeling this is picking it up itself. So yeah, probably. But, I got a feeling a resistor wire off that coil is going to, to the distributor is going to bounce almost all that out of there. Worth a try. Yep. Yeah, it seems to me that's what uh, my dad ended up doing with the TV problem I was talking about, mm -hmm. was put something between the coil and the, the distributor. Distributor. Okay. Yeah, that would have to be a resistor coil wire or some kind of, I call Chris, and what did he call it? A, I want to say a nano ferrite, and I know that's not it. <laughs> it was techie, techie, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah. It seems to me in those days there was an actual electronic mm -hmm. device that you know, went yeah. in between the. Maybe, maybe there was another condenser that went in there. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, we'll be back. So we put the um, camera up there. We put a resistor wire on the uh, from the distributor to the coil. And that's a temporary thing, but turn the camera on. Our flickering is 90% gone. So getting it away from the coil with a resistor wire may be our solution. So we're going to go for a drive. If this works, we're going to mount this up over here in a more permanent fashion with a couple of screws. But, wow, that was a simpler solution than I was expecting. So yeah. if this is a solution, time will tell. That is 300% improvement. I don't even see it flickering. I get my beautiful face in the mirror next to it. <laughs> yes. So used to trying to figure out what's behind us that We're about mile three now and never seen the image look as clear as it does right now on that thing. So the habit, the hard part is I keep looking right and left for mirrors to look at. But in time, we'll develop the habit of looking up there. So I just never thought about that coil being, as I think about it, it literally was about a foot from where we had it mounted before. So. It makes sense that it would have been picking up noise from the coil. So just a resistor wire on the coil and lifting it up that couple feet made a difference. Yeah, where where was it mounted before? Right here. 
off there. So it was hanging down, you know. Yeah. So literally it was 12 inches or so from the coil where it is behind the dash. So in a way it's almost like a magnetic field. Yes, all kinds except of noise, you know. Yeah, except it's radio right. frequency. Yeah. But the farther you get away from the, the source of the system, the yeah. coil, then yeah. the more it diminishes. If we took and replaced the rest of those plug wires with resistor wires, I'm sure it would clean up even more, but I'm satisfied with this. So, yeah, there's enough motion with the car that's. <laughs> yeah. But I'm really not seeing much screen flicker in it at all. So, yeah. Good. We'll go back to the shop and we'll make this more permanent. I went through and made a little metal bracket right here. And then Dad's going to go ahead and mount it right up there. Yes, I know we're drilling holes in original upholstery, shame on us, but we figured not dying by getting rear-ended is probably more important. Yes, we could have made a bracket maybe that came off of the rear view mirror. We understand that too, but we didn't. Well, someday in the future, our relatives will curse us for doing this. No go? No, it's starting to go. You want the Phillips bit for the screw gun? No, I just as soon feel it, I think. Okay. Yeah, you gotta start turning a corner a lot sooner. That's yes, it's uh, I figure you're gonna take this thing solo eventually. You better have some seat time. Yeah. <laughs> A fair amount of play. Huh? Yeah, there is. <laughs> the camera's permanently mounted. Everything's working good. It's nice and crystal clear. Yeah, I wouldn't push it any faster than that. It's like there's a spot where you just start to feel a little vibration in the drive train and I always keep it just below the that's like right there it just seems like it's smooth. And that's probably 32 miles an hour or something like that. Is there a, a brightness on this? I think there's an adjustment, yes. Probably needs to be a little brighter, doesn't it? Yeah, a little bit. I think. We can adjust that when we get back. Probably for my vision, anyway. If it can be. I'm sure it can. There's buttons on the back. Oh, what well, they do. Yeah. There it is. Yes. Tip. What is it only about halfway on the... What's that? Yeah, that's more. Everything just sounds good at that speed. You know, it's you know, shaking, the engine isn't clattering a lot. Yeah. Um, let's just, just develop an ear for it. For uh, clarity of vision, I am finding that I need to tip my head up a little bit because that's up in oh, your bifocal. Top thing. of the bifocal. Yeah. yeah. It's up where the lens is ground to see distance. You have to do that for this also? No. Okay.
sitting back so I can help. Sorry? Sitting back instead of hunching over the wheel. <laughs> it helps. The camera's looking flawless. It's looking what? It's working flawlessly. Yeah. So our next thing is we're going to get these headlight wires routed properly because when we put the grill on and off, we didn't put them back through the radiator shell down here where they're supposed to be, which means that we need to take these sockets back apart. And it's not a big deal, but it's got to be done. So we're making a little insert for the driver's side headlight. The wire comes through this and that's where the screw goes and then that screw becomes the contact um, for the light and it was missing on the driver's side. So we're duplicating that. This was more of a hard rubbery thing, but we're duplicating it out of Delrin. So this is uh, about 1.02 by 0.525. So we're going to take some cuts here with the lathe and turn this down and make a part. So. My cutter angle is probably not the best, but for what we're doing here, this will be fine. Delrin is pretty greasy stuff to work with, and I'm sure that's what this is. Okay, we're not quite in far enough yet, but close enough. We're beyond our parting point, so we're good. All right, we'll take another cut. There we go. Got a little better take on it now. Getting down close to the final size now. Okay, last cut. Hopefully. It's going to be awful close. Maybe one more. that? Exactly. If I could read my dimensions, it would be nice. So if we went in a half inch, we should be good. Okay. Because this thing was, yeah, that should work. Here's our little piece that we made. It's got a step in here for the steel on the line to go wire to go through, and then the screw goes in this end to make contact with the wire. So it should work. We'll see. So what took like 20 minutes maybe to do that? Yeah, about that. It wasn't that long. So you had a nice break. And <laughs> yeah. This is our handmade spacer for the light socket. We put this into the light bulb. The spring for the socket is in the light itself. So our job is to just put this through here. We machined it to the right depth so our wires poke out and then we just run our screw in here like so 
which is bugger to get started, especially because the original ones were rubber, not Delrin. But I already had it in here once to test fit it, so we know it goes. I promise it does. There she goes. It's just going to fight me all the way. I'm waiting to stab myself with this screwdriver. Don't worry, we'll insert rooster crows in the video. It's fine. Keep it PG-13. Okay, we're in. Well, the only other question is, is our depth right for the light itself? So we pull our sleeve up, shove that in there, insert it there, and put it into our light, hopefully. Like so. Just like this. So it just goes in there just like an old 1157 bulb, pushes and twists. Why don't you pull the camera out front and we'll see if the lights work. <coughs> yep, horn works. <laughs> Two are lighted. Very good. I'm trying to remember how you do brights and dims. Oh, that's up here. Yep. Very good. Well, the goal was we when we put the radiator shell back on the last couple of times we had it off, we didn't run these wires where they belonged. They were coming out of the hood here. So we wanted to get that done, which led us to fixing this properly this time. Um, so that's done now, and uh, everything works good. So I'm really pleased with the way that turned out. It uh, was good. Yep. Okay, let's go stick her back in the trailer. And this is why we need eight and a half wide trailer. Good. You wouldn't want this trailer to be any skinnier. And this is a skinny car. Imagine what it'd be like with a real full size car in here. Yeah. Gas off, battery disconnected, and diaper in place. Yep, ready to go.